Radnor's ice hockey is recognized at a school-wide assembly. And Radnor students take a vow of silence. Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of New Center 16. I'm Brian Roden. And I'm Emily Hamill. We'll have those stories and more later in the show, but topping the Radnor beat this week. This past week, Radnor was a hotbed of political activism. On Tuesday, April 8th, students and staff entered the school to find a pro-troops, anti-war demonstration going on. About a dozen students chose to stage a die-in in in the auditorium lobby by simply lying down and remaining there until the bell for homeroom rang. The demonstration attracted numerous observers and caused a great deal of discussion amongst Radnor students and staff. The following day, Wednesday, April 9th, the Global Responsibility Organization and Club Liberate Iraq squared off in a debate about the current situation with the Iraq War. The debate was originally to be held in the Black Box Theater, but due to the tremendous turnout, it was moved to the auditorium. Moderated by social studies teacher Ken Sklar, the debate was also successful and thought-provoking. The debaters on the Grow side were Haley Hemwall, Tom Carl, and Anmar Kin, while the debaters on the CLI side were Ben Hoover, Mike Kaufman, and John Neeland. All involved in both the demonstration and the debate would like to thank the students and staff for their support and interest. We now go to Sean Kasser, who's live in Baghdad. Sean? Yeah, thanks, guys. This is uh, it's myself. It's uh, Sean Kasser, and I'm here in, in Baghdad, actually. Uh, I just happen to be here, and there seems to be quite a little fiasco going on. There seems to be a war, a war in Iraq. And actually, a few days ago at Radnor High School, there was a debate between some very knowledgeable students, some anti-war students, and some pro-war students. So I thought to myself, wow, you know, like, I don't really know much about the war. Maybe I could go around and ask some students some questions so I could try to, you know, straighten things out and maybe get a little bit of their opinions on what's going on over here in Iraq. So uh, let's, let's take a look at some of what I came up with. Hi, Mr. Sklar. I understand you're heading the debate today? That's right. Uh, what's, if you could give a brief explanation of what's going to happen, what the schedule for the debate is. What... Well, the uh, Global Responsibility Organization, GRO, uh, had wanted to do this and was planning it for some time. There's another organization uh, that had a different perspective on it that we engaged to debate GRO. And that's the uh, Club Liber Liberate Iraq organization. So we decided that this would be a good idea. So uh, it's happening today. Okay, so the debate's going to take place, and you're mediating by? I'm the moderator. So what we've agreed collectively is uh, basically, just so there's some organization to this, and it's not a free-for-all, that we're going to have four questions that each side's going to have a chance to address and rebut. And kids in the audience will have a chance to um, participate by asking questions and making statements. Uh, so we hope to get people involved. Uh, do you feel, are you pro-war or anti-war with Iraq? Uh, well, I mean, I think it depends how you look at it, but, I mean, if you were to ask me that, you know, pre-March 19th, before the war started, I would have been anti-war, and I definitely, you know, demonstrated that publicly, so I'd say anti-war. Uh, when the Saddam statue came down this morning uh, in Baghdad, uh, what thoughts were going through your mind? Well, I mean, it, it was a really good thing. Um, I mean, there's no one, I think, in this room that would argue that Saddam Hussein is a bad person and uh, would be better not in power. Um, there's lots of cheering people in the streets, and, I, and I've seen pictures, and I've heard about that a lot, and I just think that um, there would be. I mean, if, if your country, if you lived in a country with a, you know, brutal dictator, and then a uh, country came and... and relieved him of power, that would be a good thing. Now, I'm really worried about what's going to happen in the next couple months. Um, as far as... Well, as far as, I mean, if you look at Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, and one of their um, major points was that they wanted the United States out of Saudi Arabia. And I think it's really scary if we stay, I mean, you know, in 1918, Great Britain liberated Iraq, and then they stayed there for 20 years. And um, if, if we have any intentions of doing that, or ways of you know, keeping the oil and keeping that area under our control, I think we're going to get a lot of dangerous terrorists is bred from that. Is the U.S. in Iraq because of its oil interests, you think, or do you think they're... Well, I think, it's, I think it's pretty under... Well, I find it hard to believe the human rights um, 
issues about it. Um, if you look at what we're doing in Latin America, what we did with Augusta, Augustus Pinochet in Chile, it seems like we have a, a disregard for many humanitarian issues. And it's hard for me to believe that that's why we're in there. Basically, my views on the Iraq situation right now, since we're already in war, I agree that we have to um, have a military occupation right there and um, avoid civilian casualties as much as possible and take the war and um, basically we can't um, avoid war right now because we're already in it. However, I believe that it is an unjust, immoral, and unnecessary war and I will argue the, argue the case during the debate. What makes the war unjust, immoral, and unnecessary? How much time do you have? Are you for or against the war with Iraq? I'm for the war with Iraq, Sean. And what's your name? My name is Mike Kaufman. What is your worst argument for your case? I think the worst argument for the case of war is that we're be trying to become an imperialistic power and turn the rest of the world into little Americas. Okay, why do you, why do you, feel, this is, why do you feel this is the worst argument? Because it's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to keep our own people from getting blown up all the time. How do, you, how do you feel about the opposing side? I think the opposing side has a right to their opinion. I think their opinion is wrong and misguided. Well, that's interesting. I think, I think I learned a lot today. I learned, about, um, I learned all about the war. I learned about Iraq. I learned about the opinions of Ratner High School students. And uh, now back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Sean. Hope he gets back in time for this week's movie review. Anyway. As, as movements to support the U.S. troops in Iraq increase, the Avon Products Incorporated started a program called Yellow Ribbon Bundle. In support of the troops, the Avon Company is sending gift bundles, each consisting of Skin So Soft Bug Guard plus Spray SPF 15, Moisture Therapy Lip Balm SPF 15, and On Duty 24 Hour Plus Deodorant. For a $5 donation, one of these special packages can be sent to the USO for delivery to the troops who need these items. A note of support can be sent also to the troops with the package. To send donations and notes of support, contact Avon Independent Sales Representative Christine N. Dixon Anderson at 610-896-5178. Katie Sampson was once a star lacrosse goalie here at Radnor High School. She graduated in 1998 and went on as a freshman to Middlebury College, where she helped lead the women's lacrosse team to win the NCAA Division III championship. In January 2000, she suffered a severe spinal cord injury and was paralyzed from the chest down. She has undergone rigorous rehabilitation with the same resolve and fortitude that characterized her determination as an athlete. Now Katie raises money for research to identify a cure for spinal cord injuries and organizes the lacrosse community to sponsor the Katie Sampson Lacrosse Festival on an annual basis. This festival provides premier lacrosse competition between public and private high school players in the Mid-Atlantic region in an atmosphere promoting sportsmanship and camaraderie. This year's festival is Saturday, April 12th from 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. at Haverford College. Stay tuned after our broadcast for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Katie Sampson herself. On Thursday, April 10th, Radnor High School honored its state champion hockey team with an assembly that showcased to the school their victory in the Flyers Cup and consequent state championship win. The assembly started with coach and social studies teacher at Radnor High School, Dave Wood, talking about the team, their win, and his interesting new haircut. A video was then shown that was a highlight reel of the team's victories in the playoff games. The video concluded after about 10 minutes, and then the players were called down to the floor to be recognized individually for their efforts. We congratulate our state champs and wish them good luck for the next season. We'll be right back with this week's movie review. Don't go away. Think you'll never be in an emergency? Think again. Last year, 100 million people were admitted to emergency rooms. If you're ever in a life-threatening situation and have a pre-existing medical condition, it's vital we know about it. Medic Alert delivers this information in seconds. Help us help you by wearing the Medic Alert emblem. Call now for free information. Hi, this is Ned Jerry. On the speedway, slower cars are expected to make room for those with much greater speed. On the highway, you should always make way for emergency vehicles. When you see one coming, pull over to the curb or shoulder of the road until it's safely passed. Use your turn signal so other drivers will know what you're doing. Speed counts at a race and in an emergency. 
please help them help you. This message from the Byrne Foundation, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hello, and welcome back to this week's edition of News Center 16. I'm Emily Hamill. And I'm Brian Roden. Unfortunately, Sean Castor's plan was canceled, and he will not be in with this week's movie review. Anyway, on with the news. The halls were a little quieter at Radnor High School on Wednesday, the 9th of April. This was due to the over 100 students participating in the National Day of Silence. Organized by Eric Benow and the other members of Radnor High School's Gay Straight Alliance, the Day of Silence is a voluntary, completely student-run and organized all-day-long vow of silence to raise awareness about harassment and discrimination against gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered students, LBGT, teachers and their allies. The silence is to make people aware of the silence so often faced when LBGT students or educators seek help. The day consisted of participants wearing either name tags or buttons to announce their silence and speaking cards, which explains why they were being silent. Also, people who couldn't be silent that day had the option of wearing white or purple supporter ribbons signifying that they, too, stand for ending LBGT harassment and discrimination. Founded in 1996 at the University of Virginia, there are over 2,000 schools nationwide who participate in this, comprising about 50,000 students nationwide. On the main line, there are about 20 schools overall who participate, and Radnor High School is the largest. Next year, Radnor High School students hope to make it even better, larger, and more effective. We would like to extend congratulations to Marsha Pence, librarian at Radnor Middle School, who received the, the award for the first annual Librarian of the Year. Her fellow school librarians are very proud that she represents the Radnor High School District. This award was presented to Marcia at a ceremony hosted by the Honorable Connie Williams, Senator from the 17th District, on Monday, April 7, 2003. We wish, we wish Marcia well on her retirement at the, end of the, at, at the end of this school year. We suspect that this will not be the end of her dedicated service to libraries and their patrons. The Wayne Arts Center has several events coming up, including a workshop on making pinch pots, a trip to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., a lecture on multicultural arts, a workshop on polymer clay, and a trip and tour of the Renwick Gallery in Washington, D.C. If you don't know already, the Wayne Art Center is a nonprofit organization which has been enriching the cultural needs of the community since 1930. The center holds approximately 500 classes to students of all ages and abilities. The center is currently undergoing renovations and expansions. Nancy Cam Campbell from the Wayne Art Center explains. Well, back in 1994, the Wayne Art Center expanded from its present uh, facility uh, tripled its space and within four years the Wayne Art Center found itself um, out of room again and fortunately a building adjacent to the Wayne Art Center property came up for sale the Wayne Art Center was able to purchase that through uh, generous donations from the community and now the Wayne Art Center is in the midst of a capital campaign to raise 3.7 million dollars to renovate uh, the adjacent Masonic Hall property and construct a connecting link that will bridge um, the Wayne Art Center to the Masonic Hall facility. Um, the new facility will provide us with an additional exhibition space so that we can host uh, additional exhibitions throughout the year. It will also provide us with more studio space and more adequate studio space so that we can provide additional painting and sculpture classes to the community. Okay, now you can just explain how you're, uh, the funding for this and like um, the events and stuff. Currently, we have um, approximately 100 donors that have contributed to the campaign, and uh, that encompasses individuals, uh, private foundations, corporations, and government funding. Um, in, in addition to uh, um, receiving funding from the corporate and private sector, the Wayne Art Center also hosts various special events that also raise funds for the uh, capital expansion as well as for general operations. One of the events coming up is uh, an event that's scheduled uh, to open on June 7th entitled Viva La Venezia. For more information about the Wayne Center and their activities, visit their website at www.wayneart.org or call them at 610-688-3553. That about wraps it up for this week's edition of News Center 16. For Casey and everybody here at News Center 16, I'm Brian Roden. And I'm Emily Hamill. Let's go get spring break started. No, Emily. Let's get the party started right here. <laughs> <laughs>